Hey guys, Fishner right here, and today I'm going to be doing the part 2 of the making of Chaos Country. Um, they actually I made that video a long time ago, I just never posted it because I'm lazy. And I actually forgot I even did it in the first place, but I was like, heck yeah, I want to post it, so I did. Um, so this one is going to be going over sound design throughout the whole song, and then the next one is going to be the mixing, which is probably going to be really short, but yeah so first off just like the other one it starts off with this kind of big pad sound um, let me turn down my volume real quick that's kind of loud okay um, okay yeah there we go um, so yeah it starts off with the pad sound <laughs> and I made it in harmer literally pretty much everything is there Except for it was screwing with the harmonic unison pitch. Um, yeah, it's super simple. Just you know, saw with a bunch of harmonizer on it, um, a little bit of phaser, blurred unison to five. And I think those are the same. They might be the same. Um, some reverb, some delay and a little bit of chorus and it's a little bit of distortion a little hill distortion um just kind of gave it a nice texture that's pretty much it for that sound um it's pretty simple the next one is this one no wait no it's this one where'd you get here hold on What's cool about this sound is to me it kind of sounds like a stringy organ or something. I just think it sounds cool. But, um. Now, I'm not going to be going over these sounds like super in depth because, you know, you got to be original, right? At least somebody has to. I'd like to say my original self without everyone trying to copy me, but I'd like you guys to see these sounds because they're cool. So yeah, there you go. But um, so this one, you know, just saw a little bit of prism and uniform unison with nine orders. Uh, but it's plucked, obviously, and um, I didn't change the pluck shape. Uh, no phaser or anything. Just uh, the chorus put to nine order, and the depth spread to cross and mix turned all the way up, and that's it. Yeah. The next sound in the song is this one. This one. I call them feels made it massive um, in the first oscillator it's colors second oscillator is sine slash triangle um, it's really simple colors put in the half sine is turned all the way left and the intensity is turned to the side a little bit um, I have a pitch mod wheel but I didn't actually use it but it just makes it this sound deeper. I don't know. Um, there's oh yeah, there's two voices. Um, panning position is in the middle between mono and the fully to the left. Uh, the pitch cutoff is on, and it's 2.01, and it's about the same place as the pan position. Um, there's some chorus on there, some reverb. And a little bit of EQing, and that is it. Actually, no, hold on. There's the fourth envelope is in a plug shape, so it gives it a plug sound. Yeah. So that's that one. And then the next one would be this one, which is kind of like a plug bass thing. And the pluck slowly starts to rise as you know it goes on. It doesn't rise fully, obviously. It goes to 50%. Um, 
there's a little bit of blurred unison on there. Uh, it's obviously pitched down 24 uh, cents. Um, there's some hill distortion, a little bit of chorus, uh, a little bit of compression, and that's like literally a super simple sound. Um, and then there's the lead. Um, this lead, I believe, was made in NASA. Yes, it was. And I call it the rocket lead because it kind of reminded me of rocket, but I think subfocus. If I'm not insane, I'm probably wrong. Um, yeah, I used to pull saw sync, um, turn that all the way down and this to the left a little, and I used another one for the second oscillator. And uh, they're both being modulated by this kind of shortened decay plug thing. And um, in insert one, I use a parabolic shaper and just turn the drive all the way up. And in the voicing, uh, there's two voices on monophonic, and the pan position is almost mono, and the pitch cutoff is about in the middle between mono and all the way to the left, and it's at 0.45 on the right side. Um, and there's just simple dimension uh, below that. Whatever the heck it is, I'm having brain fart. Uh, the, there's some delay sync, sync delay. Just, yeah, perfect. And, and EQ. And that's like it fell. Oh, wait, no, no, it's not. Yeah. This uh, envelope one is modulating the syncs. Which gives that wet, wet, wet type sound. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this, which you might have heard a little bit of, is the riser. And what I did to make this riser is, it's a massive. And what I did was I used the white noise, um, in the amplification. So it sweeps up, obviously. And then this I'm actually going to show in the mixer because this is where actual things are happening. So first it's being EQ'd obviously to get rid of the low end. And then um, there's a 1 fourth beat gate on, uh, on it so it's being chopped basically. And there's a low pass. Um, then a phaser. But you can hear the phaser pretty well. And then, um, chorus with the stereo set all the way up. And then another phaser, because phasers. And then, uh, this is the cool thing that I always like to do is kind of make it sound like a little bit m like a metal, like sliding metal almost. But look, to do that, you literally just turn the decay all the way down. And maybe cut out the lows a little bit. But I think it makes an awesome effect, so that's why I always do it sometimes. I don't always do it. So the next sound is what you always hear is the bass. Now, uh, like I showed in the first video, this is the original patch, it's some super simple junk, by the way, it's kind of obvious, but I made this part all before I made the intro, um, besides, besides that main lead, all of this came afterwards, um, some kind of recessious space. Um, pitch down 24 cents, 2,400 cents, whatever. Uh, the prism's a little to the right. Um, it's in hertz unison, 
because it gives it the kind of scratchy effect and it's just two orders um, the uh, uh, what is it I think it's called harmonic protection it keeps the low ends um, there no matter what you do to the high ends and stuff so they'll always be like basically bass there um, oops I think I just clicked on something All right. um, there's some log distortion uh, a little bit of chorus and some compression and a little phaser yeah that's it for that one but it's the same sound I used for the second bass as well I just had to go really high pitch um, in the second part and then with the metal effect, because this is the metal effect right here in this reverb, um, the metal effect creates a cool little thing with that. Yeah, so that makes a really awesome effect. And then, um, I'm going to go over the bases first in all these because they're easier to go over. Um, and this is the next bass, which came after the first one. It's like a... This is simple re-space, uh, but I call it Juicy Fruit. I have like three or four Juicy Fruit, yeah, three. Three Juicy Fruits, one Crunch Fruit preset, I don't know, I just, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So this is what, that one sounds like. It's just super high pitch re-space, basically. Um, to make it, I did a prism just a little bit. I uh, detuned it by 0 0.04. Um, some log distortion, uh, a little bit of blurred unison. Um, the harmonic unison pitch is at an angle like that. And I believe that is, that is literally a super simple sound. Oh, the harmonic protection is on. And I did the same metal thing in the mixer, which I can show you guys later. Um, I believe these are just kicks. Yeah, those are just kicks. Um, the next sound, I'll go over the synths now, I guess, would be this one. Right. Actually, it would be this one. Right under. Which is a massive. which I like call this boat song. Makes a really cool effect. Um, I've used it in a crap ton of my songs, like uh, White City, and um, I use it for like risers sometimes. Like, I think when I first made it, it was like Walk on Water, which was a super long time ago. But, um, so it's just two saws, both pitched down, one octave. Um, they have an envelope. Um, I'm bringing them down even more. Um, there's two voices, a little bit of pen position messing around, uh, some chorus, some reverb, and some EQ. It's like really simple, but I think it makes an awesome effect. It is being plucked, that's why it sounds a little different from the other times I've used it. But it's being played at a super high chord. This is like every note in the flipping uh, key or something. But I like to do that because it kind of sounds neat sometimes, which it did. And then the next sounds are this one. Which uh, are these first two sounds here, just put together in a short thing. And pretty much all those down there are the same. All of these up here. Okay, I keep getting stupid phone calls that don't mean anything to me, and I'm pretty sure they're the wrong number. Um, so once again, I'm back. Okay, so the next sound is this one, which you can't hear, of course. Um, I believe it's one of the sounds I've already went over, but uh, I'll still show it. Which, uh, Oops. Uh, yeah, okay. It's one of the ones I've already showed you guys, but, uh, Yeah, 
this one is the first one just set into chops this big cord just chopped up um, and then uh, this is just some drum loop which you should never use anyone else's drum loops that's why I made it myself um, and then this is really the siren sounds that I think I showed you guys already before in the last episode and gun sounds this is some huge sample that I kind of chopped up from what I wanted uh, and then the other siren sound and then this is the lead down here just playing like two of the same notes repeatedly or something That just goes into the lead. Um, so let's start off with this other. I'm pretty sure, yep, 3S oscillator, because 3S oscillator is the best. That's pretty much it. That's all I did. Um, these two, two and three oscillator doesn't matter, it's just the first oscillator is actually doing anything. Uh, and then I turn the arpeggiator on in the function. Uh, that's literally it. There's some extra reverb or whatever on in the mixer. And that's all there is. Um, oops, I just deleted something. Okay, there we go. So, this first bass is like the first hit bass. <laughs> so it's the same one. Yeah. And then this is the new bass. Um, this bass is really awesome. Because this is the first time I ever made this bass, and then I used it in uh, your bassy love song, if you remember that. It was just modified a little bit. But the way I made this bass, which actually I did a tutorial on this, is called like guitar bass or something. Um, so I don't go over it too much, but three oscillators plus the modulation oscillator. The first three oscillators all pitched down 24, modulation oscillators pitched down 12. Um, Square saw to AI in dirty needle. Um, you can obviously see that. Uh, there's some band pass and band reject. The parametric, parabolic, para, para, parabolic shaper, uh, hard clipper, two voices, mono in the panning position. Um, some tube distortion and dimension expander, that's what it's called, I remember now. And EQ and oh, the AI is bent minus, by the way. And yeah. That's it. And then let's see what's this. What is this? What is this? I think this is the first, yeah, it's the first juicy fruit. Okay. And then this is the cool top sound just chopped up. Yeah, so. And this, this is the guitar bass again. And then the main bass again. And then this is the new bass. Um, it's like a screamer space. I think I call it like the death screamer or something. I don't know why. But, um... Yeah. So there's... It's a dirty PWM. Uh, a Ben Minus. Um... It's... A scrapyard on the second one. A Ben Minus Plus. And the third one is an Acid. And it's at Formant. And it's pitched up an octave. Um, there's a one there's a parabolic shaper, there's a scream filter, um, two unison voices, pitch cutoff is set at like four bars away at point one on the right. Uh, pan position is all the way to the right. There's a chorus ensemble there. 
dimension expander and EQ. Makes a very strange sound and I like it. This one's pretty interesting because it's the juicy fruit. But it's also that riser that I showed you at the same time. That's why you hear do. Which I thought was cool. And then these are all the same sounds of yours. This is the new sound. The growl bass. Um, which... Yeah, this is my growl, zombie growl, which I rarely ever use because it sounds pretty bad if it's not like super mixed. But in the first oscillator it has AI, Ben minus, second is AI, uh, the third is spectrum, and third is scrapyard, the third is spectrum. They all pitch down uh, two octaves, and then the modulator, uh, there's ring modulation. It's also pitched down 24 octaves, and there's ring modulation on oscillator one. Phase modulation on oscillator 2 and position modulation on oscillator 3. Um, in the insert, there's a parabolic shaper, and in the second insert, there's clipper, hard clipper. Um, what kind of makes it sound cool is the double notch filter and the band reject filter. Um, as you can see, all that crazy modulation and stuff. Um, in the voicing, there's two voices a monophonic uh, legato triller. Um, pitch cut off a tiny bit and pan position uh, to the right of mono a little bit. And then there's some Bronner tube which is being modulated by the second mod wheel just like everything else is. Um, dimension expander, just a tiny bit of dimension expander. And some EQ. Yeah, so that's that. Sounds pretty cool. Um, new bass, which isn't really new. It's actually a very old bass that I like to use a lot. And it's really cool because if you resample it, it sounds pretty freaking awesome sometimes. If you listen to a bassy love song, the first growl bass is this bass resampled, which is pretty cool. So, how I made it is in Massive again. I call it the Yeah Growl. Because it sounds like Yeah. Um, so, there's the three oscillators are on. Uh, the first one has Chrome, the second one has Bronze, and the third one has uh, Crusher. Uh, they're all on Spectrum, and they're all pitched down one octave, except for Crusher's pitched down two. Uh, insert one is Parabolic Shaper. There's a double notch bandpass filter with a bunch of modulation from five which is in triplets but slowed down to one to two ratio which gives it a slower triplet effect and then uh, the voicing nothing's changed in the voicing there's only one voice and then there's some tele tube distortion uh, dimension expander and a little bit of EQing And that's pretty much it. So that's what's in the mixer, which I'll show you guys later. So none of this is new except for this pattern. Um, it's the same bass as the ones before, just different patterns. Which, yeah, I just kept making it drop pitch repeatedly. Which sounds cool. It's all on C. It goes down to C0, which gives a cool effect. Um, maybe I will show you guys what's in the mixer. I'll do it after I finish going over the bases. I'll kind of go through the mixer. But, um... This space here. Uh, it's massive. Some really old sound that I made. Uh, it 
if you've ever heard downtown or downtown VIP, this is one of the main bases in that one. Um, so in this one, set sign triangle, uh, electric, and screamer. Uh, sign triangle is pitched on an octave. Uh, two octaves and screamer is pitched on one octave and then a modulation oscillator is pitched up one octave and it's uh, phase modulating oscillator two <clears throat> in insert one there's a parabolic shaper and it's a two there's a sine shaper and they're both just boosted up in the drive uh, there's a scream filter and filter one there's two unison voices at monophonic uh, pairing position is almost mono uh, but not quite there on the left. Um, there's some Bronner tube, dimension expander, and EQing. Uh, and then I believe I pitched it up like an octave in the global tune, but that doesn't really matter. Oops. Um, so yeah. And then I think this Yeah, this is the valve base again. As chaotic as the song, the song sounds, which is kind of what I was going for, it's really simple. Like there's really nothing too crazy about it. And the next sound is this one. This is the cinematic movie bass, which isn't the original cinematic movie bass. This has been modified a little bit, um, but it's also crazy simple. Uh, there's just a little bit of prism, let's drop down, two octaves. Um, there's a little bit of reverb and a little bit of chorus, a lot of distortion and a little bit of compression. And that is literally it. And a tiny bit of harmonic protection. Super simple. <laughs> And then the next sound, which I believe is the second to last sound, is this one. The Slayer patch. No, wait, that's not it. This one. So, obviously, like I said, I made this in Slayer. <laughs> FL Slayer, which I've been told never to use, and I did it anyway. So I don't think there's much difference from just open up the default Slayer patch in this one besides it's on solo dynamic uh, and then the amp it's tube and the cabinet it's British. I literally think that's it. There might be a little bit of difference but if you're looking at Slayer you can tell. Uh, and it's obviously just been stereo separated like a crap ton um, to go over the bass. Yeah, it gives it like an awesome texture to it basically. Now this sound isn't new. Uh, this is the A scream I believe. Yeah, no scream. And it's the same, just different pattern. Um, and then this is the same kind of drop as, like, second drop as the first one, so everything's the same pretty much. Um, and then there's this weird sound at the end. This one is obviously there's a there's tremolo on it, but the depth is full and the speed just gets faster, I believe. Yeah, the speed just keeps getting faster, and uh, the pitch thickness goes up as it has nine voices or nine uses. 
and it's in uniform. Uh, it's pitched down in octave or two octaves. Uh, there's Captain of Course on there, and the timber is changed to this loop. And it's also set all the way to square. Really. And then pretty sure no there's a tiny bit of phaser yeah there's a tiny bit of phaser and then uh, the, ran the phase randomness is to the left a little bit and um, I'll go over this one in the next year for sure though because it has EQ and then the effector which I believe is in like FL11 or something I'm using FL10 right now, but I just downloaded it, so, um, it has the Vox effect on it. See so yeah, what it does is it goes to the right on the x-axis and goes all the way up on the y-axis. Um, and without it, it actually just sounds like this. It going up on the y-axis is what makes it sound like it's rising in pitch, but it actually isn't. Um, so that's cool. And then there's some reverb. I didn't mean to do whatever I just did. <laughs> um, yeah, and the wetness on the reverb is being modulated. And I think there's just a limiter on it that's uh, making it quieter because I'm pretty sure this is a really loud sound. Um, yeah, uh, that's like literally everything. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning and I don't like getting up early. This is early for me, by the way. Um, so yeah. Most, I'll just kind of look over. Uh, if you want to know, yeah, I'll go over the mixing in the next episode. I'll show you guys how I mix this track, which is different from how I'm doing it now. But it's not that different. And I'll show you guys how I do mixing now. Uh, and probably like another track or something. I'll just like open up another one real quick and show you. But yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned some stuff. Hope you guys can do some new things with these bases and leads and stuff. You know, at least try to stay original, please, that would be nice. I really don't like when people copy other people's scrap. Because I spent a lot of time, 11 hours and 30 minutes, which is a lot more than I normally spend on songs. So, yeah, um, you know, don't steal people's stuff. It's messed up. Not cool. You look stupid when you get caught, too. Then you ruin your own career because you're known as a thief. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you know this helped you out, and uh, subscribe or whatever, and leave a comment if you want to see more. So thanks. Bye.